I'm so blown away that people hear me say patience and they think that I'm saying be complacent. I'm not saying don't go hard. I'm not saying don't be ambitious. I'm not saying don't have tenacity. I'm not saying don't go get it. I'm saying don't burn yourself the fuck out. I'm saying be strategic and realize that if you put six years into something, I'm saying get your shit right. Do you know how many people promote something that's half pregnant and then promote it for with all their might, but it doesn't do well because once everyone buys it, they don't like it? Like get your product right. If you, if you spend three years on getting your product right, it's gonna do much better long term than if you spend eight months getting your product right and then you go hard promoting it for a decade. Like, like you know, patience matters. Build real relationships. You know, like if, if you want something from everyone right away, you're not gonna have real relationships if you're asking. Like be patient with your relationships. Give, be thoughtful. So yeah, I mean, I'm stunned by how many people think I'm saying be passive or be, you know, or be complacent or be lazy. I mean, I'm, I just laugh. I watch these clips sometimes in my feed. Nothing gets me more excited than when someone says, don't listen to Gary Vee or Gary Vee's wrong. Because what's fun in that is I don't get competitive. Well, let me phrase that. I get as competitive as I do curious. Like, I I love changing my mind. I love being wrong. Like, I love relying on my conviction and my humility equally. So anytime there's a little bit of clip on that, but the one that most people have gotten wrong is this one. There's plenty of people who love on a podcast be like, don't listen to Gary Vee, patience is crazy. Like, this is your 20s, you need to fuck. I I just laugh at that to no end. Normally, because I have context on the person that's saying it, and I'm like, I go harder in a day than you do in a year. <laughs> no, it's awesome. <laughs> um, uh, all right, last one. So for someone that wants to kind of start from zero, they want, to, they want to build a personal brand, Yep. what advice would you give to them? They have to do it around something they love because if they're doing it around something they think there's money in, they're gonna not make it. They need to figure out how they communicate. There are too many people that are great writers that suck on video that are trying to make TikToks instead of writing blog posts on LinkedIn. So self-awareness around how you produce content. Um, right, like, like I can't write the way Ryan Holiday or Tim Ferriss write. So I don't blog, right? Um, you know, if I could rap, I would be Russ. You know what I mean? Like, so like, you gotta know your way. Um, and, that's huge. And then I would say you have to be unbelievable at PAC, which stands for platforms and culture. What I think I do well, and what I think others that I pay attention to, brands or people that do well, is they understand how to make social media content or podcasts or videos. on you. Mr. Beast understands the platform and the culture of YouTube, right? Joe Rogan and Call Your Daddy understood the concept of platform and culture on a podcast. Right? Charlie D'Amelio understood the platform and the, and the culture in TikTok. I understand the platform and culture around social media overall, which is why I'm strong in every platform in a world where most people are strong in one or two. So, you know, I think um, self awareness of how you communicate, be deeply passionate that you're making the personal brand around things you like. It can't feel like work or you're gonna not get there. And then third, be a practitioner in PAC, platforms and culture. From 2007 to 2011, I replied to every single email and tweet I got until four in the morning. Nobody knew who I was, so I would go into Twitter search, search wine terms, and jump into conversations that people would tweet having this Pinot Noir, and I would reply, they didn't know me. And I would reply, that's a good one. Did you try the year before? And slowly, but surely, for hours and hours and hours, for years and years and years, I built a foundation that years and years and years later started the creation of what people see now. And meanwhile, people start a TikTok account, post five times, don't go viral, and they're like, this sucks. The, the lost art of patience and foundational. And, and this has a lot to do with parenting. 
Our parents' generation around the world where they could, when they, they borrowed money from parents. Our parents borrowed money from grandparents and paid them back if they wanted a house or start a business. Now, kids think their parents should just give them money. If you're 22 years old or older in the world and your parents are giving you money, you're in deep trouble. Why? Because you have been told by your parents and you've told yourself that you were un- incapable of standing on your own two feet. Correct. Which immediately leads to insecurity, which leads to very bad behavior. Dependence. The end. And then when I say this, and this is maybe the fifth or sixth time I've said this publicly, I'll get a bunch of emails saying, you don't know me, I have two children from a bad man who left me. I'm like, live in a worse house. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, why am I looking at your, in- if your situation's so horrible and you need to take your appearance, why did I just click your Instagram account and you have a Prada bag? Yeah. we become so materialistic that people want all these things, but they want them. The question is why do they want them? They want them because we're communicating to the world. Every one of us right now is wearing what we're wearing, our haircuts, everything, communication. We're positioning ourselves to the world. I I really, really think there's a lot of important conversations that are not being had. I'm trying to throw them out there and I enjoy, I remember, you know, meeting with you like a year ago. Like, I like when people see what I'm, and, and my hope is that if I have the courage to say stuff that people aren't talking about, then others will start doing it. Like, these are important, this is an important video. This, what if one kid or grown up watches this on YouTube and changes their behavior? That's intense legacy. So, what's the number one thing you wish you knew when you're starting out? So, I'm 18. And what is the biggest lesson you learned when you got on the new level? Uh, what's the biggest lesson I learned? To, to follow your yeah. gut. To always just follow your gut. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit is going to distract you. Uh, There's and, opinions that you may it, look up right. to when you first go into it, but right. you realize they don't know shit. Absolutely. Follow your intuition. You know what I'm saying? Listen to your gut. It's never wrong. And it knows what the fuck you want before you do. For me, for me to right. answer the first part of your question, the one thing I wish I knew when I was starting out is the thing that I preached to you guys all the time, and even though I believed it religiously at the time, even though I was 100 on it, I would have been 110 on it, which is patience. Facts. When That's you're so, awesome. when you're, when you're yeah. hungry, mm-hmm. when you're 18, when you wanna be the biggest in the world, when you wanna be the biggest in the world, like, it's patience. I'm, I'm 41, right, about to turn 42 in November, so it's not as, you know, I, used to, I don't know if you play this game. John, John is it? John, I don't know if you play this yeah, game. John. When I was 18, John, this is what I would play. I'm like, okay, I'm 18. And in 18 years, I'm gonna be 36. That's young as shit. I have my whole life in front of yeah, me. Everything yeah. I just lived, I have all that time in front of me and I'm still gonna be 36. And I would do that literally, literally. Even at 30, I remember doing, I'm like, fuck, I've done a lot already. Wine library was already big and everything. I would kind of made it a little bit. I was like, and then, and I've got my whole life yeah. and I'm gonna be 60, yeah. which is old, but not fucking dead yet. But now, <laughs> but now, I'm four, now I'm 41 and I'm like, okay, I've lived this whole life. Okay, at 41, I'm gonna be 82. I'm like, mm, 82 is a little like, you know, like, you know, and so for me, even with that, even with the game that I've played my whole life about doubling up my number to make me realize how much time I still had, so fucking be patient, do the right thing. Shortcuts kill you, like, do it right. Even now, even though that doesn't sound as good, yeah. I, I still do it. The fact that you're 18, John, which means you're double your age, you're still five years younger than me, that's fucking insane. And the thing is, you yeah. are so quick to be put on, to showboat, to win for yourself, for the world. Whatever it may look like, it usually leads to the move that keeps you away from winning.